In the message of Nanak, Japji occupies a very significant place. I had spoken to you about the invocation which is the first three words of the Mool Mantra, Ek Omkar Satnam. Ek Omkar, Ek means one, Omkar means the existential sound. After that what it is said is the attributes, it is Satna. Sat means truth, name means none. This is the explanation of the sound. Truth is existential, truth is beyond time and space. It is both mathematically and existentially true. After Nanak emerged from the river, Ekonkar Satnam was his first message. And this is so profound that is in these three words the entire Sikh religion is condensed. After that, whatever Nanak spoke is the explanation for the Besar Manas. Otherwise, once you have understood Ekonkar Satnam, you have understood the very essence of the religiosity, very essence of the message of Nanak. Nothing more is needed. Ek Omkar is the oneness that Nanak experienced when he disappeared for three days in the river and appeared in front of the beloved. The story says so. And it is important because the story hangs around our consciousness. It is true in a sense because it points to something much deeper. The words are not what they are on the surface. The word water is on the surface and means nothing. But the moment this word water becomes existential, it can quench your thirst and it can do many wonders. Each word has a soul and we have to reach to that essence. The word Ekonkar is the essence. It is the oneness. And when Nanak disappeared in the river, the story says he appeared in front of his beloved. This was commune with his beloved, the union with the beloved, the synchronicity within and with that synchronicity within, the synchronicity happened with the entire cosmos. First Nanak drowned in the river, ego vanished. As it dissolved in the inner oneness, union happened. Out of this union, this existential sound, Nanak experienced. An ecstatic Nanak's innerness manifested as an eternal man message. As Nanak sang, Ekonkar Satna. Understanding dawned. The message of this experience overflowed as Japji. Japji is the eternal message of Nanak. It is the pulse of the existence that is now being revealed as Japji. The message complete, so is the search of lives of Nanak. What he has been searching for lives and lives is complete now. What is the nature of this experience, Ekonka? Nana continues. The next word that forms explains the nature of the experience. What was the nature of their experience? And Nana calls this experience as Satna. Now try to understand these words. This word Sat. In Sanskrit there are two words Sat and Satya. Sat means essence. Just as you are taking out the lime juice, this is the essence of life and after this juice is taken out, the line becomes useless unless you can utilize its rind or other things in other ways. And Satya means truth. Sat means the essence or the existential and Satya means that is true. Both came from the same root. The difference is great. This difference is necessary to understand. Satya 
this which is truth is the discovery of the philosopher or darshan philosopher is a crude transliteration of the hindi word darshanik darshanik means one who sees it he wants to know what the truth is darshanik comes from the word darshan darshan means to envision and philosopher means that which philosophizes it can be a mental exercise and in most of the cases it is simply a mental exercise accordingly 2 plus 2 is always 4 these can never be 5 or anything else this is mathematically true it is a mathematical formula that 2 plus 2 is 4 however it is not existential this is the discovery of man 2 plus 2 is true but not existential the water boils at 100 degree celsius it is mathematically true but there is a condition water boils at 100 degree celsius if temperature and pressure remains the same when you move to the mountain the pressure changes and then what happens the boiling point on the mountain also changes so too when the level of consciousness changes the meaning of truth changes as well when you look at it here because it is the level of consciousness that determines that your understanding and understanding brings the meaning when you were a student of form 1 you have understood the things in a different way when you were a child you were told in response to how child is born it used to be said that when the mother is sleeping the god puts comes and puts the baby or angels by the side of the mother because at that level of consciousness this is what you can understand so too when the level of consciousness changes the meaning of truth changes as well when nanak looks at the world it is harmony and when you look at it you will find a chaos a misery you ask anyone no one will say that there is harmony he will have complaints about this and that and this misery and that problem and all those thing this is what he can cope at the same temperature and pressure water always boils at 100 degrees celsius and also there is one more thing there along with the temperature and pressure the quality of the water if the water is hard with full of impurities it will take longer to boil the normal water and the water's content is measured by its ph value so when the temperature and pressure is same and water's ph level is normal it boils at 100 degrees celsius this is the fundamental difference between your consciousness and that of a nana or a buddha so for transformation the enlightened one comes out of his realm and changes your being this changes your level of consciousness the words are simple he uses very simple language in order to explain but it is his energy field that flows through those words that changes your level of consciousness and thus begins the inward journey scientific fact is one aspect of truth there is yet another aspect of truth and that is poetic or philosophic you dream while sleeping the dream is indeed there while you are sleeping while you are sleeping remember this word is important dream remains only as long as you are sleeping and it is a different matter that after waking up from the sleep you can still remain in the dream state dream exists however it is not true the dream happened it cannot be denied had the dream not been there how could you have the dream its happening is certain but is not true in the night you dream and when you wake up in the morning the dream has vanished its reflection may remain in life certain events are true but not existential also there are events that are existential but not true 
something that is mathematically true is certainly not existential. Dream is, dream is existential because when you are asleep you dream, it cannot be denied. Dream is existential but not in life certain events are true but not existential. Also there are events that are existential but not true. Sometimes something that is mathematically true is certainly not existential. Dream is, dream is existential but not true. Nanak says that God is both existential and true as well. Therefore, you can neither reach God scientifically nor poetically alone. Science is the discovery of truth, while poetry is the discovery of all that is existential. On your own, both remain incomplete. God is both the essence and the truth. Nanak says the journey of religion differs from the ever to. Religion is the discovery of that which is both existential as well as scientifically true. Either of the two remain incomplete. When Nanak says Ekonkar Satnam, it includes both Sat the essence and Sat the truth. That which is the name of the existence is sweet like a dream and true like a mathematical formula as well. It is simultaneously true in both, sweet like a dream and true like a mathematical formula. It is both the pulse of the heart and the intelligence of the mind. If you are going through the intelligence of the mind, you are discovering one aspect. When you are going through the pulse of the heart, you are discovering another aspect. But life is total. It is the pulse of the heart and the intelligence of the mind. Where the pulse of the heart and the intelligence of the mind merge together, that's where Satnam is born. That is where the harmony comes in. Something that exists true at both levels, pulse as the pulse of the heart and the intelligence of the mind, only that is existential. Sometimes you find it difficult to make a decision. It seems logically or the intelligence of the mind accepts it, but the heart does not. A true, a message or something becomes existential only when the pulse or the heartbeat and the intelligence synchronize with one another. At the confluence of head and heart begins the journey of religion. This is why in the Christian way of Jesus, there is significant of sacred heart. Sacred heart is nothing else but the confluence of head and heart. And from there, the journey of religion begins. When mind grows at the cost of heart, science comes into existence. And when heart grows, at the cost of the mind, world of poetry, art, music and imagination comes. At the confluence of head and heart begins the journey of religion. At the confluence of head and heart begins the journey of religion. Something creates a harmony between head and heart and that synchronicity is religion. When mind grows at the cost of heart, science comes into existence. And when heart grows at the cost of the mind, the world of poetry, art, music and imagination comes into existence. When heart and mind are one in synchronicity, Nanak says you enter the mysterious realm of Omkar, the existential sound, the unheard, the uncreated. Your whole being begins to sing a Konkar Satna. And that is what had happened to Nanak. The heart and the mind tuned into one another. His innerness became a musical symphony and orchestra. And then he entered in the mysterious realm of Konkar. He sang a Konkar Satna.
Nothing is more sublime and sacred than this. Nanak does not separate ek and onka. These are one, not two. Thus entire Sikh religion is condensed in these three words. All that Nanak says is the explanation of the eternal message Ek Omkar Satna. This is the eternal message. After this comes the attributes of that which is existential. What are the attributes? What are the qualities? How would you recognize them? Karta Puruk. Karta means doer. Puruk means, this is the Punjabi word. The Gurmukhi dialect to explain the word what means in Sanskrit as Purush or man. Karta Purush and here Purush is slightly different than the man or the ordinary language. Man when we say we understand the man as the biological man, as the man that you see on the street who puts on the Gav of a man, dresses like a man. But when Nanak speaks about existential Purush, it is both anima animus, male, female. Hindus have the concept of Ardha Narishwar. Shiva is depicted as half man and half woman. One side of him is masculine, the other side is feminine. And that is called Ard means half, Nari means feminine, Ishwar means God. Ard Nari Ishwar, half feminine image of God. Sometimes you will see that in certain songs, or certain dances, this kind of makeup is done where half side of the Dancer is shown as masculine and the other shown as feminine. This is to depict the innerness. So he is the only doer. Now when you look at how can it be, then how can you say that you are not the doer but you are the one doing everything. This is where the ignorance is. You know your bulb is giving you the light. That's what you can see. You can see your television playing the image and the sound. You see your stereo system playing the, relaying the sound. Radio is doing this. Your electric stove is cooking food. Refrigerator is keeping the food cold. Washing machine washes the clothes. Washing machine cannot cook your food. What is this? Who is the actual doer? It is the energy which is at play behind all these instruments. That is the real doer. Now, but the energy which is in the subtle form cannot manifest itself without the body, mind, intellect. So you are an electric stove is like you who is an instrument specifically designed to manifest one quality of electricity. Electric stove can operate at little variation. It can maintain its flame, maintain its temperature, low, high and medium. Your oven can do broiling, it can do toasting, it can do many functions. But of this one quality, one quality that is baking, but baking have sub-qualities. Sometimes you want to toast at a higher temperature. Sometimes you toast at the medium. So, but basically these are these instruments or appliances. They are individually body, mind, intellect realms that are capable of manifesting the quality of the electric current. These have been designed specifically. A television set is designed to manifest one of the quality and for what purpose? For entertainment and the needs of the man. Electric stove can also work for the entertainment and for the needs of the man. Manifest one quality. 
the stereo set manifests one quality laptop all these manifest certain qualities certain attributes of that which is existence but the real doer if your electric stove is there but the current is not there in the house can it manifest electric current is the at the is at the helm of affairs it is the life force and when this life force is gone that electric stove is useless and also there has to be a connectivity between the original source and the instrument if the radio set because of any malfunctioning cannot connect itself to the relaying station which is the radio connect to the re particular radio frequency you will not hear any message electric current is at the play as the helm of the affairs is at the root but the body mind instrument is there to manifest that quality but between the two there is a interconnectivity so to your body your mind and your intellect as one unit must have connectivity to that existential sound or that you can call as a spirit you can call it as soul you can call it god within you can call it omkar or anything it has to be connectivity and the moment this connectivity is lost or it is distorted the synchronicity is lost and the life enters into a state of chaos then he says ek omkar sat naam now the attributes karta purush means the only doer nirbhar nirbhar means without prejudice when you know all the electrical appliances they work on the same principle and there is no conflict between the stove and the oven that is staying next to one another the stove does not say that i have to be working more than the oven or it does not say that tv is more important than the stereo or washing machine everything has a purpose to do but you can say these things do not have the mind yes indeed they have the mind but their mind is of a different nature there is no ego man is ego an electric stove cannot transform into a uh, enlightened electric stove or your tv cannot attain to enlightenment but you can attain to enlightenment because you have that potentiality and along with that potentiality there is a drawback that you have ego also in case of these appliances they are unconscious but man is unconscious and conscious both he is unconscious in his present state but he has capability he has potentiality to attain to his awakening to attain to his consciousness and the moment that consciousness comes that i and you are two different body mind and intellect realms you are capable of baking bread i am capable of making the tea and the tea by itself is of no use and bread by itself is no use when you use your bread to make the sandwich and i make my tea and we put them together it becomes a great breakfast your work and my work put together brings the harmony your work and that of your spouse makes a harmony and that is what we call cooperation that is we call it that is the way of the life when the stove cooks food it comes on the table you turn on television getting the entertainment of watching the favorite show at the same time you are enjoying the food that is cooked on the stove but the stove does not say if you are going behind that woman i will not give you the food but the man does the woman does that how can you pay more attention you spend more money behind the television all the time you are spending the money behind the television but not behind me 
you buy one and i sit but the the television you keep on changing when the technology changed you changed the television but you did not change me the stove and fridge there is no the stove and fridge the stove and television there is no conflict but the moment a man begins to pay attention to something else jealousy breeds in him that's why nanak says that which is is nirbhar without any prejudice without any bhar means jealousy because he is at the play he is the pulse of everything then how can he be against the other akal murat that which is beyond time and space your television may change your stove may change your bulb may change but electricity remains at the helm of affairs throughout akal beyond time and space during the lifetime of this tv electricity was there and when you change the television in the life span of the other tv the life span of the first tv came to an end dissolution but the other came in electricity is still there the same plug you connected to the new tv a new image a new reflection new entertainment becomes ajuni sabham ajuni sabham means born comes into existence out of its own free will every human being is born out of male female relation when ovum and sperm interact with one another fertilization takes place the process of growth begins from embryo to fetus state come the same way an enlightened one assumes the birth out of his own free will and this is the christian concept of jesus born out of virgin mary normally when you are interacting in your male female relations you are filled with emotions filled with passion you are not meditative if you are meditative at the moment of the conception you are acting through the body but your consciousness is at not at the level of the body your understanding is of the beyond then you can bring a jesus into life you can bring a buddha into life you can bring a muhammad into life you can bring a higher consciousness into life and that will be called poetically or symbolically born out of virgin mary this is a symbol that time when jesus and is not that they were unmarried they have the extra marital or premarital relation no at the moment of the conception of jesus joseph and mary's consciousness was not at the level of the body not at the level of passions not at the level of the mind they were in totally in commune with his beloved they were meditative in ordinary language of the world and that's why jesus was born higher souls are born only in the state of meditativeness and how one can attain to this by the grace of the master when you are within the energy field of the master it becomes easy this is the attributes of eight and parts of me i will continue with the attributes the explanation of each word in tomorrow's session